In chapter 7, we uh, look at adding classes to the external style sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and um, add a new class just to show that process. The header is a class, so just to look into the, the results, uh, you know, the final file results, the header uh, is basically used to render the name Anna Atkins in um, specified uh, font. And so you can see if we look in the header, if we look in styles.css, uh, the header has a font family. We're using uh, Ruthie from the, uh, Google font, uh, the Google web fonts. And then uh, there's a font size that's being applied um, and a color, right? So if you look in your source code, um, you will see those Google web fonts being uh, accessed up here. And if we go look in our uh, browser, we can see that the header um, basically is modifying how Anna Atkins looks. As a reminder, you will only see those Google web fonts in the browser when it's connected to the internet. So in Dreamweaver, you're just going to see uh, whatever the sort of secondary default font is, is uh, set at uh, instead of seeing the Google web fonts. Um, so keep that in mind. I'm going to add another class. Um, so um, a class is used, you know, just to define a sort of a set of properties and values to, you know, any part of the web page. So let's go ahead and I'm going to just click in here. Um, I'm actually going to add some, maybe like a, a subhead, something like that. And I'm going to call Anna Atkins the cyanotype queen. And I don't want to assign the class header, so I'm just going to get rid of that class equals header. So right now I just have this as whatever my default type would look like on the page. And I'll go ahead and preview that in a browser and you'll see um, this is pretty ugly. <laughs> um, so uh, the subhead, uh, the subtext is, uh, subheader is coming way down on the page. I'm going to make a few modifications to this text, cyanotype queen, by adding a new class. So remember, there's two parts. One thing is you'll add the new class, which is basically going to add a new, um, a new declaration block in your style sheet. And then you have to apply the class in your HTML document. So I'll start over here in my CSS styles panel. I'm just going to press the plus sign on the document for a new CSS rule. Um, I will choose a new class. You know, an ID is only applied to one HTML element on the page. So if I wanted to make a, you know, I could call this a subheader and have it be an ID, but I'll just make it a class for now. And that way, if I wanted to apply it later in the page, I could. Um, and I'll just call this, remember classes start with dot or period, so I'm going to start with period and then I'll call this subhead. And I'm saving this in styles.css, so I'll go ahead and press OK. And now I'll just make some changes, so I'll maybe set this in Verdana, um, 18 pixels, and I'll go ahead and use the same color. OK, now I've created my subhead class if I and if I look in styles, there's that subhead. Font family is Verdana, font size is 18 pixels, color is pound ff3. Now if I go preview this in a browser and I'll save all of my work, notice nothing has changed. Nothing has changed because I did not apply my class yet. So I could either um, what I would normally do is just click right there in the in the code and press space and then I'll just start to write class and class comes up right away. I can double click that and then I'll double click the class that I want to use. So that's how I would apply the class. Let me command Z to undo that. Command Z a few times. You could also select the text and choose from your properties panel on the HTML side class and choose from your list subhead. So either way is fine. You'll end up, you'll still end up with p class equals subhead, and then close p. Now let's take a look at this on the page. I might want to make a couple of modifications. I am seeing the the different change in font and the the type. Um, there's a really big gap here. So I'm going to close that gap. I'm going to look at a couple of things, um, and this is just because I know to look there, and also I know what's in front of us in the later chapters. I'm using the p tag for these, and if I look in my style sheet, I do have a p tag in my style sheet that has a font family assigned to it. I'm just going to add in my p tag here to set my mar all of my margins to zero and all of my padding to zero. And I could do that here in the style sheet like I just did, 
or I could also have done that by double clicking on the styles and doing it in the rule definition dialog box. So I'm going to go ahead and view this again in Google uh, Chrome and now I can see with my margins um, and padding set to zero those gaps are now gone which is which is a little bit closer to what I was hoping to see. I'm going to add one more little um, detail to that subhead. So if I scroll down, here's my subhead. I'll just double click that. And um, inside block, I'm going to go ahead and add just one pixel of letter spacing. And OK. And one more time, I'll preview that in the browser. So what you want to remember, I mean, this is not specifically a part of the chapter. I just wanted to add something to have a little demonstration of adding a class to your style sheet and applying it in your HTML document. You add your class, you can use the new CSS rule. You could also just go straight to your style sheet and make up a class. I mean, you could do that in here um, pretty easily just by typing. You're going to use a period and then the name, whatever name you like. Um, all, you know, I'd stick to the guidelines of lowercase letters and no spaces. Um, and then, you know, you'll use your open brackets and list your properties and values uh, and finish those with semicolons. Your class can be uh, defining some type, it can define padding, margin, borders, whatever you can think of. And then once your class is created, you've got to add it to your HTML document. You basically, you have to apply it. So in this case, we applied it to the p tag. Um, and that way, when we close the p tag, we're also closing the use of that class.